sorry. No, you're I'm good. just like. I'm just water. Trying to. Submarine. I don't know. We'll see. Alright. Only thing we'll need to move there is something to I'm sure we will. We were talking to one of the people. Really? Oh yeah, you're gonna see a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're never gonna hit 100 because the bottom of the stuff is never gonna be on top of the surface, right? So 10 feet, that's right at the top of the, the ocean. We're looking for about 15 feet. It's actually the toughest part of our uh, captain's job is initially getting the submarine to want to go down. This submarine is supposed to be um, positively buoyant. So that's just a fancy word, it means it naturally wants to float up top, and that's why he's struggling to fight against that positive buoyancy. So if you guys are nervous, don't be nervous at all. The submarine has that safety uh, mechanism built into it, so if we're ever stuck at like 100 feet, and we lost power, battery operated submarine, if we're ever to shut down and lose control, like lose any short circuiting, this submarine, all he has to do is flip a couple of switches, and that'll send in all this high pressure air, and we'll just plop up to the surface in a couple of seconds. Really, really awesome, but that's why it's so tough. You have to He's making sure that we're not seesawing all the way down to the bottom, taking into consideration um, even the weight of the passengers, right? So he, uh, we know how many passengers are on board, and he just takes that into consideration as he uh, ballasts us, ballast us out. So I did have a big breakfast. So let me slam down to the ocean floor. That's my bad. I'm sorry. I love toying the floor, I tell you. Oh yeah. So we're making it down to 30 feet. We're going to hit about a 45, I can see too. 45 feet. That's going to be our drop zone. And that's just going to fluctuate throughout the tour. So keep your eyes on this step page. We have one on the port side where my head is. And if I ever cover it with my big Hawaiian head, you can turn around. We have one on the starboard side next to our co-pilot uh, Tiffany back there. But I can already see hints of the ocean floor. We got some uh, coral debris. It's kind of like a coral graveyard. But we're not actually going to be uh, near any fish. We might see a couple of fish stragglers here and there. But fish, if you guys watch Finding Nemo, you know how uh, the dad always tells them to stay in the coral reefs. That's where you're going to hide from predators. That's true. Fish don't like to swim in the open ocean. They need these structures to hide in. So right now, we're not going to see too many uh, 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 reef fish. We might see some here and there. But uh, Oahu, we don't have a lot of natural reefs. That's why Atlantis had to sink some down here in order to boost our marine life. So that's the first thing we're going to go see right now. We're heading over to our very first artificial man-made reef. And that's where the party really starts. So a couple of tips and tricks as we make our way there. First, but don't worry, equal viewing tour. You guys are going to see it on both sides. So starboard side, port side, doesn't matter. We're heading over to our very first structure. These are called the Hawaiian Pyramids. Wow, look at that. Oh, I got some giant trevallies on the port side. Some big ulus already. See the fish? You guys on the starboard side probably seen some goldfish. Blue shark snappers. I'm going to pull back a bit so you guys can talk story, take lots of pictures. Talk story, that's the Hawaiian word or the local word for talking amongst yourselves. So talk story, ask lots of questions if you have any. But I'm going to hop off real quick so you guys can enjoy. With. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so these, you guys might be wondering, what are these things? We're passing by the Hawaiian pyramids. We don't know, they were put down here by ancient aliens in 1989. Ooh, <laughs> spooky. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So that was our very first installation ever. We put them down here in 1989. We worked with the University of Manoa, their marine biology program. It was their design. And like I was saying earlier, Oahu, we're not like our sister islands. So that with all those ridges going, you can imagine all of our fish See this? Right along to with your them. Right? So an effort to reboost 
and uh, give a uh, uh, mother Ner or uh, mother nature a, a, a boost. We sunk these down here. So you guys on the port side, this is our second installation. It's a lot bigger, and these structures are just going to continue to get bigger and bigger, more unique. But you guys port side are seeing at first. These are called the Japanese reefs. They look like a. Uh, Maybe wine racks or like um, someone said the shack from Krabby Patty from Spongebob. I don't see that, but someone said that. These are made of spun fiberglass. We got these from oh, um, fish, Osaka, Japan. We got a lot of sleek unicorn fish here in these structures. But you guys on the starboard side, because these structures, port side, were so big, they're about 25 tons. We weren't able to put them align them on uh, both sides of the submarine and do a pass down the middle. We have to just drop them in a row. So uh, we're going to do a U-turn. U-turns are legal here underwater. So we're going to do a U-turn, and you guys on the starboard side will get to see these Japanese reefs. They're like fish condos, basically. But uh, for now, starboard side, you guys are looking at the only natural ridge, uh, reef we have here on Oahu. This is our last natural ri ri ridge. It's called the uh, Paleopono. Paleopono. But this is the Paleopono, the ridge of life, or the ridge of righteousness. Can't beat the the real thing. All of our artificial ri uh, reefs have maybe like a couple of different kinds of hard stony corals but this uh, ancient lava flow right here is home to I think about 13 different kinds of hard stony corals I can see some cauliflower coral, rice coral got a beautiful antler coral here at the bench it's about 30 years back really high in chlorophyll that's what gives our Hawaiian green sea turtle this fatty green color back in the day uh, Hawaiian green sea turtles or honu were a delicacy and that's why uh, we started to see a huge drop in population for the honu. Uh, they were really, really common to eat for our fishermen before refrigeration was uh, invented. You could keep the turtles alive uh, by flipping them on their back, putting a wet burlap sap over them. That way that, that meat stays cold for a long period of time before you're ready to eat it. So super sad and that's why uh, there's the land because it was so high in uh, lo'i, lo'i ia, like all of these carols, these things that we survive on our staple foods, lots of fruits and vegetables here in Waikiki. But because um, the mosquitoes eventually came, it just, ugh, it just attacked all of our natives that they uh, convinced the Hawaiians to cover Waikiki with sand. So now all of that sand eventually got washed offshore and it covered that hard stony uh, substrate. That's what coral needs. Coral needs these flat substrates to attach to, to lock onto. So because all this sand from Waikiki just covered the floor, it just destroyed a lot of our corals. So um, this Paleopono is actually a really, really great example of what our artificial reefs have accomplished. So because we installed this uh, Japanese reefs, that, that invited all of these reef fish to come on by. They made that area their home and they eventually made their way over to this ridge, this mountainside. They saw all of Make sure you guys look inside the pukas. The pukas is the Hawaiian word for holes. So look through the holes, see if you can spot any more eel. Yo, the fish, you see them Octopus, all? if you have really yeah, good I eyes, you'll be able to spot the octopus. Our octopus would love to camouflage through all, the all these uh, pearls. Oh, I got a more eel here in that. It looks like a puka that kind of looks like Mickey Mouse's head. You'll see that more eel, so scary. It looks like a snake. He just plays dead and waits for someone to swim past him so he can jump him. Uh, I got a sea star here on that polio plant on that's Patrick. Here's what SpongeBob. There he is. Oh, look at all the bubby, man. Not the sea cucumber uh, here on the polio funnel. No, we was They look like logs or sports oh, cucumbers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a little girl, I used to take these look cucumbers and shoot too. them at my brother because they'll they'll it, all like that water. Butter. So I used to shoot them like a super soaker. I didn't I did not know that there were living animals, and I uh, I wasn't conscious of uh, their feelings. But it's actually, it pains them when they shoot that. It's they're, they're, they're expelling all of their internal extremities, so it hurts them. And now every time I go past one, I just apologize. I'm so sorry. I hurt all your ancestors. You got a huge fatty sea cucumber on the floor right there on the port side. You guys on the starboard side get a better look at the Japanese reefs. A lot of our endemic species here with these Japanese reefs. Beautiful yellow tang. Some sleek unicorns. What? What? Huge 
extra lolly. Those are just some babies. So we got a huge herd of jacks right above that top uh, Japanese reef. Those boys are um, highly aggressive, very territorial. One of our top predators. And those I mean, are just, just the babies. The out, babe. like when they're that small in Hawaiian, we call them all the way over there. Yeah. And that's the size yeah. you want to uh, hunt. That's it's like, you it's like above their, ground. It's their yeah. 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 It looks just really, like above really ground. Big Look at that big old mountain. Big, big boy. Like, like this mountain in the ocean. Look at that. You see that? Like you could walk on that. You guys watch Finding Nemo? You know that uh, fish that looks like a zebra with that black tail? That's the guy that helped him out of that dentist office in the fish tank, helped him escape. There he is. That's Gil. That's a Moorish idol. I'm looking for the eel, babe. I saw him. He was laying on the fish. I think they see it. We're going to go a bit deeper. As we move offshore, the water is going to get colder, so you'll see all of this oh, coral cool. kind of disappear. We're going to get more I did, I got a lot of halomita algae on the port side. Oh, we're already at 102 feet. That came out of nowhere. Oh. Our pilot is super fast. 102 feet. I take a picture of those death gauges, guys. I think they say that less than one third of 1% of the population has ever gone this deep. So take pictures, kiss your loved ones on the cheek. It'll be the deepest kiss you'll ever have. Aww. Aww. this romantic. But this is sort of where the uh, the tour changes. So we stopped making these DIY uh, projects, I call them. Yeah, we want to bring them out of the Concrete slabs. We were like, why are we going through the trouble of making them? We can just buy structures that are already made and sink them down here. Like you can touch so starboard it. side, you guys get it first. This is our first set of airplanes. Airplane wings on the starboard side, right side, getting us nice and close to these Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi YS-11s. What do you mean? I'm just Some on of the video. Shark, Oh, shark, shark right behind that prop. Where? That's a white tip reef shark. Real slender, real skinny. Oh, we got a shark. giant Where? trevally. Okay, this is a big, big jack hiding under the wing. And now, and now if this jack oh, sees so that sad. shark, oh. there is going to be some trouble. These jacks are territorial, aggressive, like I was saying. And if he spots them, they will chase those sharks out till the sharks just can't defend themselves. Port side, you guys will get your own set of wings. Yeah. Yeah, that white tip reef shark, Manola, Lachia, very, very skittish, solo. Only five feet long is their, their longest they ever grow. Wow. Look at this coming up to your right. Look at this, babe, coming up. Look at this on your right. Oh my Got a school of some more goldfish on the port side. The Hawaiian word wow. for goldfish is veke or vehe. Ooh, a huge school just swam right past us on the port side. Wow, so baby. Vehe. Yeah. Vehe is the yeah. word for open. To open. Uh, back in the day, traditionally, we'd eat the vehe to open up our ceremonies. Any ceremony we had, we open it up with the vehe. Hope you guys got a picture of those death gauges. We're gonna start to climb back up. So actually, when we very first installed these structures, uh, they were complete airplanes, two huge airplanes, the Mitsubishi Y-11, four feet long, 35 feet across. She is a big girl. Whoa. Look at this. Whoa, another wow. huge jack. That's a bluefin trevally right there with that pretty blue shimmer on the dorsal. That's another good tasting fish. Wow. You see those? Wow, look at all that. I'll probably just point out all those things I like to eat here. <laughs> wow. This is not a shipwreck. That's a really great question. Is this a shipwreck? So we actually, everything we saw, who, more eel, sorry, more eel on the top of the deck. But everything down here, we have sunk ourselves. We cleaned it up, removed the engines, made sure it was habitable and safe for fish, stripped off all that paint, uh, cut out these huge holes and we put them down here so that uh, we could grow our marine life. Someone said pufferfish. I love pufferfish. so cool. If you guys see something cool in the back, shout it out. Don't be shellfish, yeah? Share with the friends and family around you. Fish. Yeah, look at all these fish coming through. Wow. Beautiful pass by our pilot. It's so, it's so impressive. He is literally the only um, 
legally blind pilot we're allowed to hire, so I'm really proud of him. He got us super close, didn't crash into anything. Such a good boy. We were going to U-turn you guys on the starboard side, we'll get to see the YL-257. The YL, a little bit of history on the YL. The YL served in uh, World War II, a little bit of the Korean conflict. She went all over the world and eventually got mothballed in Guam. Um, and they brought her over here, they towed her all the way back to Hawaii, they wanted to use it for target practice. But Atlantis, we found out about it, that we're not losing. Anytime we start to lose coral, we get some coral bleaching, those are the first fish to go. They cannot survive there. So I'll keep my eyes out for some uh, pyramid butterfly fish as we make our way, we're U-turning now to the San Pedro, or the Wild 257. If you guys are interested in scuba diving, this is the, I think the Wild 257. It looks like these turtles are about to swim. Oh, no, he's swimming down. Awesome. So you got two female turtles on the port side. You guys in the back, don't worry. You guys will probably see it. The summer is 100 feet long. All right, we got two female holdoos. Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, yeah. He's floating right above the San Pedro. Those are two girls. You see them? They're coming up right here. Nice. So awesome. Two females are probably just about to dock themselves. They'll push their fins down. They'll let all the reef fish around them know that they're, they're ready to be approached. And then those reef fish will kind of clean off her shell. They'll lighten her load. Because sometimes uh, their shells get so heavy. If they don't clean it off, all that barnacle and algae will just keep growing over time. And it weighs them down. If they don't get it cleaned off, they'll just keep getting weighed down, weighed down until they eventually cannot come up for air these fish, and they'll drown. Right? So it's really important self-care. These uh, these photos really teach you about self-care. Self-care is very important. I see you. Take care of yourself. Don't have to be down here. Yeah. I know because those are females. You guys might be wondering how do I know. I know because they rolled their eyes at me. <laughs> They're all saying. <laughs> no, but you can tell by their tail. They're really We're making our way to the San Pedro. You guys will notice it's a lot smaller, so it's just a fishing boat. The Wild 257 was a yard oiler, basically just gas up like a gas station for the Navy. But this is a fishing trawler. So on the third day, they had about uh, 420 gallons of soy sauce, and they dumped that bad boy all over the fire, finally put it out. So that's why we call it the teriyaki boat. This boat stunk. Let me tell you, when they brought it back in, they brought it back to the, the harbor. All of that soy sauce was encrusted into the side of the ship, plus that bait, they had fishing bait that just rotted in the sun while they were just adrift in the ocean. So it smelled really, really bad. But the fish didn't care, they don't care about the aesthetic, they don't care how it looks. They are happy to live on the San Pedro. So you'll see all of these holes, you'll see how the fire affected this boat. Those turtles are still probably on the bow. Looks like they were just about to dock themselves. They can hold their breath for about two to four hours. Damn. So can I, that's my record. Someone said they see it. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's a male. I'm so sorry. That is a male. That's one male and um, I can't tell if you guys can see her tail. Might be two males. Beautiful. Port side, we're heading to the shark wing. Fingers crossed, shark's still here. This is real life though, we don't know. We don't, we don't, none of these animals are on payroll. So we have no idea what we're gonna see. Our captain says he has eyes on the Manola Lakea, the white tip reef shark under the wing. So you guys keep your eyes peeled. Oh yeah. Oh, I see. Is that else? 
Yeah. Oh, beautiful, huge trevally, oh my gosh, it's a big jack. Oh, there you go, the white tip free shark is hiding, lurking, hiding under the shadows he needs to avoid those you see him uh, down here, babe? big giant trevally. He's oh, right here. You see it? Yeah. Those trevally are like tuna, like open ocean swimmers. It's very, very powerful. They don't, they're not reef fish. They don't need to hang around here in order to like live trumpet fish. But they like to use like their poke bowls, real fast access to the grocery store. But they're so aggressive that they're and they're powerful swimmers that they'll just keep headbutting. They'll keep knocking onto the side of that shark, to the shark leaves. And just like a honey badger, I don't know if you guys know honey badger. Memory of the dive site and a compass. But it also helps. We put down these uh, navigational aids. So you guys might see some CMS locks here and there with some rope tied to it or some anchors. We put that down there like breadcrumbs through the forest. And we'll just follow it until we reach our surfacing dome. We have one spot that we like to dive down to, our dive site. But we have all of these different locations that we surface at safely. We have like these fish are my favorite. They have these huge eyes, cute, cute smile, man. Very dangerous, very, very poisonous, highly poisonous. Those are my favorites. All of these puffer fish, we have some trevallis coming right at us on the port side. They're not saying hi, they're trying to chase us away. <laughs> they think they can take us, they can't. But you see, uh, this uh, this submarine is, uh, like I was saying earlier, it's battery operated. The, we don't disturb the fish at all. They'll come right up to us sometimes. They'll even follow us all the way back to our dock and just eat the algae, whatever is left on our submarine. We come down here seven dives a day. It doesn't disturb them at all. I think the only thing that they might notice is just the size of us and also a little hum from our vertical thrusters that keep us down here at all times. But that's all they feel. There's no pollutants, no oil, nothing that could damage the ocean. We are eco-friendly. Port side, you guys see that uh, cement pillar I was telling you 